I think that if we only use the kinds of questions that are being asked in, in these philosophical discussions like Russell's teapot, uh, we would never really understand the mysteries of the world well. Um, and honestly, we probably never would have launched off this rock in the first place. If everybody thought in the way that Russell's teapot is presented, then we wouldn't have made it off the earth? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't understand how you can actually say that. Because if you guys don't know what Russell's teapot is, is it's a thought experiment meant to convey why people that don't believe in God don't believe in God. So you have theists out there that make the claim, well, God exists. Okay, great. Where's your evidence? Well, you know, we don't really have physical evidence in that kind of way. This is, you know, experience or something or another, magical miracles. Some guy had a short leg and now he's got a longer leg. You know, that kind of thing. It, it, it's to illustrate the philosophic burden of proof. So you, you have the religious people that have a burden of proof to prove that their God exists. Just like with Bertrand Russell, in his teapot, Bertrand Russell said, well, there's a teapot orbiting the sun in space somewhere around Mars. Uh, or so it's been formulated different ways. But let's just say that like there, there's a teapot out there orbiting the sun. OK, uh, what ev what evidence is there? If, if Bertrand Russell were to be like, no, 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 you have to prove me wrong that there isn't a teapot orbiting the sun. That's a, a fallacy in logic. Like that's a shifting of the burden of proof. Atheists aren't making a claim. We're just saying, I don't believe in your God. And religious people are saying, well, God exists. In order to make a positive claim like that, you shoulder the burden of proof. Now, if, uh, when I say the Abrahamic God does not exist, then it's incumbent upon me to prove that he doesn't exist. And I think that I can do that fairly well just by using the Bible. The Bible is the uh, requirements document for this deity. If the Bible and uh, the requirements for this God fail in any kind of way, then the Bible doesn't describe the God that it was meant to describe in Therefore, that God doesn't exist. Well, does the Bible fail to describe either God or this reality in some kind of way? Yes, it does in multiple different ways. Historically, it's not accurate to what we have in history. There are minor like people in places that it gets right, but the overall message of the, the Bible is not congruent with what we know about history through archaeology as well as other uh, disciplines in science. So the Bible cannot describe Describe reality as it exists, as we experience it. So the God that it describes also is not real. So that, I mean, that's an overview of my argument against the Abrahamic God. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that you shoulder the burden of proof whenever you make a positive claim. Religious people are saying, hey, this God exists. So they have to prove with evidence that he does. And that's the purpose of Russell's teapot. And apparently this has something to do with just not believing in a God. So let me explain this. If you're saying that you have no evidence for something, for its existence, okay? That's, you, you got that part, right? If you have zero evidence for the existence of something, in other words, no, exit, no evidence that the teapot that's orbiting the sun somewhere near Mars, if you have no evidence that it exists, probably does not, if that's the thought process, that is to completely misunderstand an item called probability. What? Where does probability get brought up in this? This is a philosophical thought experiment to explain the burden of proof. This is this is not anything about probability. Probability is key. You use probability all the time, even though it's maybe not a word that you use all the time. But let me explain how probability works and how this helps us make sense of our, our faith in God as well as science and what science understands. For example, I have a coin here. If I were to spin the coin on this table, and when it stops, what would be the odds that it's going to be heads? 50%. Unless you want to count the, you know, possibility that when you spin it, it's going to stay upright on its edge, which could happen. That's a little bit of a percent. But if we, we don't want to consider that possibility and just whether or not it lands on heads or tails, I mean, it would be 50%. Like it's got a 50% chance because there are two sides to it and it's got to land on one of the two sides. And so you've either got heads or tails, unless it's not a quarter or something like that. And it's like one of those double headed things that Two-Face has, but even Two-Face has a scratch side of it to de to denote, you know, the bad side versus the good side. But 
even so, if you have a double headed one, then it would 100% always land on heads. But let's assume that it's just a regular quarter or some other coin. It's got a heads and it's got a tails. It's got two different sides. And so it would be 50%. I don't know what this has to do with Russell's teapot or atheism or science necessarily, but maybe he'll get there. What is the probability that this coin is going to be heads? Now there's evidence that could help you with this, right? What's some evidence that could help you to know if it landed heads or not? I mean, you just, you just fucking look at it. It's, uh, you know, kind of a visual inspection kind of thing at that point. I mean, you just look, oh, where did it land? Heads. What's this about a teapot again? How does this connect? Yeah, there you go. Look at it. No, that's serious. That's evidence, right? Evidence. I what, came up and I examined it. I go, uh-huh, that's heads. I know. Fucking nailed it. I'm doing 100% on this test today. I know my probabilities. Coin, so I know which one's ahead and which is the tail. And yep, it's on heads. Maybe I could just tell you. Friends? It landed on heads. Well, if we're just going by that, that would be, if you were to factor in all of the different inputs and everything like that, you'd have to figure in, well, how reliable is this person? Is he likely to uh, lie to me about whether or not it's heads? I mean, even on a football game, when they're flipping to see who kicks or who receives, I mean, they flip it and then they have multiple people confirm that this is what it landed on and everything like that. So, I mean, I, I, I get that he's going for a very simplistic kind of example here, but what you start going into like, oh, well, you know, I could just tell you what it landed on. Oh, well, then I had to consider what's the proclivity for you to lie to me. In, in the grand scope of reality, I guess it's still 50-50 as to whether or not it landed on heads. So then it it's a totally separate thing for, for me to know whether or not it landed on heads. Like, that's a totally separate calculation that you'd have to run that would involve those factors that I listed, whether or not this guy's trustworthy, what kind of coin it is, and all this other stuff. Maybe I'm thinking a little bit too much into this, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing where he's trying to be really simplistic about complex, like, shit. Also, how does this relate to Russell's teapot? I don't fucking know.